Welcome back to Linux Weekly, daily Wednesdays where we sit back, relax, take that midweek break, talk about some of the fun things that we found going on in the world of Linux, open source, and uh, apparently text editors, Jill, because we just had a very, very dramatic um, rereading and retelling. Also, (laughs) auto-exec bat files, config.sys, those things. Config.sys. The DOS ages. Yes. The dark times. If you yeah. want to listen to that, go listen to the live and uncut series. That'll be out uh, for patrons a little bit later, or just wait till next week. It'll be on our YouTube channel that I always forget to mention that we have a live and uncut secondary YouTube channel. It's at the bottom of our main channel. There's a link, I believe, for like recommended or something. But what are you up to, Jill? I hear that you got something that you're not allowed to use on this show. Yeah, <laughs> actually, I am. Uh, because uh, these are very special keys. This is my latest keyboard. Actually, I just recently got three. My, much to Steve Husband's chagrin, <laughs> I got three new keyboards. Um, <laughs> I hoard keyboards, yes. But this one is beautiful. It, I've been wanting this one for years. It's uh, it, the, the keys are in uh, the color gradient. It's a rainbow keys keyboard as well as RGB uh, <laughs> rainbow uh, vomit. <laughs> Jill <LEDs. Bryant>. But <laughs> I, 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 I want to get I got more. all the colors. <laughs> I want to praise you because you have found a, a keyboard that manages to be annoying without blinking. Yeah, I sure did. <laughs> but the nice thing then is that these use black mechanical keyboards, so they're really quite quiet. Yeah, really quite quiet. Won't won't be too loud in my mic. okay (laughs) yeah actually it is it is nice because i've had i have right now i'm using um uh, red switches on a pink keyboard and it's fairly quiet quiet but these black ones are even quieter (laughs) we can always apply the downward expansion but yeah this is like rule number one, this is a common question I get. How do I stop mm-hmm. my keyboard from making noise on the stream? No mm-hmm. one wants to hear the correct answer to this. Everyone wants. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Ven uses membrane keyboards. <laughs> Classic you membrane. <laughs> buy a keyboard for streaming. Like Jordan lives that dual keyboard life. He's got, I got my big, loud, shouty, clacky keyboard and I got one for streaming. Like that makes mm-hmm. sense. Like I, and you know, Buy a good membrane keyboard. I get tired of holding this thing up, but this surprisingly, this is the one Microsoft product I do own is their ergonomic. Yeah. This thing looks like the Raider from Battlestar Galactica. Uh, but, and they are coming out of the stratosphere during uh, the end times that have been on upon us for the last two years. You know, they were up to like almost 200 bucks, but I think they're back in like the 160, 170 range. Mm, nice. Oh, also, you can do downward expansion, noise gates, and all that fun stuff. But, Jill, I'm glad. Is that thing wireless, or does it have a cord? It's both wireless and wired, but I, I will be using it wired because when I am broadcasting, I do not want to deal with when the battery dies. <laughs> so that's a thing. <laughs> but, yeah, I have so many different mechanical keyboards with all the different colored keys Mm -hmm. for all them all my different computers and and then i i I do have ones that are membrane um keyboards that 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 have the sound of uh mechanical so that's a thing also (laughs) i mean you know if it moved or something or screamed maybe but i don't know i i've been over this multiple times i'm from the generation of like i i grew up with shouty mechanical keyboards yeah. And we improved upon um, this technology. The Model M. Yeah. I love my Model M. <laughs> 100% we improved on this technology and we, we found a way around it and to make something better. And some people, I don't know. The yeah. only person that wants to hear that nonsense is you. And that's cool. You do you. Just don't inflict it on other people. Mm-hmm. I'm, if you happen exactly. to be in a situation, no one wants to be next to the person at work. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, a uh, couple of things going on. My NVIDIA network cards arrived. I got some nice, uh, nice Mellanox, formerly Mellanox. I guess they're always going to be Mellanox and video and some now. So now I get to say network powered by NVIDIA. Those showed up. They're a thing. Here they are for the video. Woo-hoo. Yeah, Like, all right, that's cool. I'm going to play around mm-hmm. with them. I have them in um, Jill's box right now is running. And these are your standard um, 850 nanometer 10 gig SFP plus cards that apparently, as we discovered, 
in uh, Discord when I posted that earlier this week. Uh, do not ship to Slovakia and or Australia. So oh. <laughs> that's unfortunate. Womp womp. But it did give me a chance to go around and stab all my um, fiber cards in the studio, which is fun. I even like ran out of stab on my <laughs> tried and true older fiber stabber, and I had to break out a fresh fiber stabber and need to clean all the optics with this thing. It's kind of cathartic. Nice. If you like speaking to things that click, this thing makes a nice clicky racket every time you do it. Yeah. Yeah. That so, would drive Steven, me up so, the wall. So, so you don't mind having the the clickies when you're putting things together. You just don't want them to hear them when you're streaming. <laughs> I don't hear anything clicking. Hit you. <laughs> no. Um, what else do we got? Oh, right. Quick mention of this. I talked about this in the pre-show. Um, Dear IRS, if you're going to send anybody a letter <laughs> for anything in big red stamps, because like most of you, I'm sure, or you have the service available, um, they scan, photograph all of the mail that goes to the like meet space mailbox and you get an email. I'm like, hey, this is going to, you never want to see one from the IRS. I'm like, oh no, what is this? Did my boy. <laughs> Scary. Yeah. No one says, woo, IRS email or mail, physical mail. I'm like, this is not good. And I'm just saying. Pro tip, IRS, big red letters on the front of the envelope that just says, not an audit. <laughs> you know, just. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're not sitting there going, oh, what have I done? I've messed up something with taxes because I do taxes for a couple of my own companies. I'm incorporated, nonprofit, and um, for this stuff. I, I fortunately, I was telling Jill, it was only like 20, 30 minutes mm -hmm. before the mail person arrived. It's like, oh, no, this is just for something. Okay, fine. <laughs> really fun. not fun <laughs> didn't want to go through that uh what else do we got vp9 is running on the jitsi server so jill's coming through with vp9 goodness and that seemed to hold up i tested uh, that on saturday it was nice and smooth didn't have any big issues it's mm -hmm. not that much more overhead and um i might I'm, I'm pondering we were talking about this during the track mania last night on Tuesdays where we pick out the tracks that we're going to play on Friday about possibly building. Cause I, I don't really want a portable gaming system, but the, I agree with Jill, the steam deck really neat, really neat. Mm -hmm. want to play with awesome. one, <laughs> but I don't want to play with one and just end up giving it to someone, which is what would happen with me. So I'm thinking about buying one of those, um, AMD Nook style things that Valve said, hey, use this if you want to test your games and your software, but you can't get a hold of a Steam Deck. Because yeah. then I can use that for other things than having some poor Steam Deck like taped to the side of a desk with wires. Uh, there you go. <sighs> so, yeah. The ones from Mini's Forum, too, that we talked about, those are really good options mm. as well. It's mm. getting the like Vega 10. I don't know. Maybe it's a possibility. All right, so what do we got? Starting off mm -hmm. with a little bit of PSA this week, and um, I saw some people online like doing victory laps. I'm like, no, don't do victory laps about stuff like this. This, um, there was a vulnerability discovered in Snap. There was, and uh, mm -hmm. this is just my little PSA. Update your systems. You should be doing that anyway. But yeah. If you haven't, <laughs> go ahead and make sure that you do. This allowed attackers to elevate the privileges, of just basic accounts all the way up to root. So, ooh, spooky. The one thing I don't like is the team did not explain if the exploit comes in like the form of malware. Like malware. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or yeah, they how. didn't say. <laughs> yeah, that was a little. I'm hoping they'll shed some more light on that later on. I'm curious. Mm -mm -mm. <laughs> <laughs> Jill, you, you have snaps enabled on your box, don't you? Oh, yeah. So my Ubuntu system, I, I, I actually use to test software for, for LWW, um, has uh, snaps enabled. But I did patch it just uh, two days ago. And uh, But the Ubuntu computer that I'm using right now is my broadcasting rig. I uninstalled snaps back in, like, long ago. <laughs> I, I keep... The system snap free. <laughs> oh come on, Jill, live a little. <laughs> yeah, live a little. Well, I yeah, previously on uh, the the last version of Ubuntu I had installed, I had snaps enabled, but mm. I just decided no, I, I don't really want to run them on my my uh, 
uh, broadcasting rig, and I don't want to use the Chromium Snap as well because I do enjoy using Chromium. But what I about the Firefox that, Snap? <laughs> no, <laughs> not that either. <laughs> it's fine for my test rig, but I just not not on this machine. <laughs> Still, no one sold me on the like <laughs> serious benefits of containerization on desktop applications. I'm clearly I'm just waiting for somebody to come and like school me on it. I genuinely am, mm -hmm. but yeah, I don't mess with snaps. Uh, but here's the thing about Linux. I mean, even you know, I I, I don't get upset with Flatpak or snaps. Just don't even yeah. like what's the big deal. I mean, yeah, yeah. But update, yeah, update, all, update. All nice I don't package. care what you're running, even if it's yeah. a Gentoo. Update your systems. Schedule it. Absolutely. <laughs> OK. Hey, I love my app images. As do, well, do you love so. your mobile phones with Linux on them? Yeah. So this is really cool. The UB Ports Foundation has just released Ubuntu Touch over the air version 22. Um, this is actually the UB Ports open source Ubuntu Touch mobile operating system for all supported Linux smartphones and tablets. And there are a lot of them, fortunately. And this release, though, has some important updates to actually pave the way for new features. They've added FM radio support to allow for real analog radio listening on supported devices. This is really awesome. And an FM radio app will be in the App Store in the next few weeks. And they now have WebGL support, which allows for faster 3D rendering. That's always a good thing because it, it, it needs to be sped up a little bit. I love Ubuntu Touch, but it, it does sometimes have a few seconds of pauses here and there. Jill, all you have and... to do is play with a pine phone, then go play with Touch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I play with uh, Ubuntu Touch on my uh, OnePlus 5 and and uh, OnePlus 1. Mm. <laughs> so that's a thing. Oh, they got uh, support and for the uh, camera in the Morph browser. Nice. Yeah. So calls. that's mm -hmm. that was one of my favorite new additions. And yeah, it now works out of the box on the OnePlus 5. And speaking of the OnePlus, the OnePlus 5 and OnePlus 5T cell phones, it now works out of the box without doing any additional configuration like I did on mine. And yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking really forward to um, playing with this. I, um, I just updated my OnePlus 1 phone, but I haven't had time to play with it. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm digging it. So if you're wondering um, if you're an existing user, currently using the touch OT uh, it's in the stable shell. Just go grab it, mm -hmm. start playing with it. And um, let's see, OTA 22 upgrade by using, yeah, updates. That's it. Now I did count this down the best I can count. So don't put too much faith in this about 40 devices of, are officially supported with touch. It's amazing. It's a lot more it's than amazing. I was thinking. God, I remember the project started. There were only like three <laughs> Google Nexus and one, one plus. Touch. Yeah. One, that, yeah. Right. <laughs> I was like a yeah. one plus something and probably a Nexus. Um, yeah. This is, I, I genuinely think like touch is kind of the dark horse thing because it, it keeps getting better and better and better every Absolutely. release and like yeah. work is really being done on it. And I think it might end up being a viable competitor because man, we need something other than mm -hmm. Android. We, yeah. we just do. And yes, yes. That one sailfish OS user. I hear you. I hear you. But <laughs> the rest of us, <laughs> yeah, and it, and it's so nice. Uh, it, it you know it runs beautifully on the Pine phones as well. So it's just it's a really robust operating system, and it's so nice to see all this wonderful work being done on it. FM radio app. Uh, I don't yeah, think I've ever cool? seen a f old school. Well, <laughs> one thing in North America, I will say, it, I will say in America that I've none of your mobile devices I've seen here have um, FM transmitters. Or no, receivers, uh -uh. I should say, transmitters. That's a whole different thing. Uh, but yeah, that's a questionable. Now, here's the thing, though, Jill. Imagine like 10, 15 years ago, I would have killed to have um, an FM receiver, like in my Nokia oh, or I something know. like that, just so I could listen to the radio because podcasts weren't really yeah. a thing, right? And just have some background yeah. noise. And actually, when I had my own, you know, one of my old flip phones, I always wanted a FM radio on it and AM too. But they don't put AM on the on the they they wouldn't put AM on the phones because of the antenna. The mm. transmission would interfere. But and that was that's kind of sad. I wish I could get AM on it as well. But 
<laughs> That's neat. That's neat. Good work, everybody awesome. involved with this. Now, apt. Mm-hmm. We, we, we yeah, use is... apt. I mean, apt's mm-hmm. fine. Gets the job done. I run it all. Speaking so of this... things you need to run, go ahead and run it right now since you're listening to me do app, app, don't. <laughs> and do what I did. Absolutely apt. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm, I'm old and I made the change. Don't do apt get anymore. <laughs> Probably took me <laughs> maybe two years of muscle unlearning. Apt install. Of yeah. Apt, not apt get. Yeah. I still use apt get. Uh, I'm that person. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I made myself. It, it became it was a matter of principle. Matter of principle. Yeah. Because of a Reddit comment, like, "Why do you waste time?" I'm like, "I am wasting time tapping dash Aww. get." Hmm. But. I- I am starting to use apt install a little bit more. I like to have that uh, speed indica- indicator, <laughs> percentage indicator. It's nice. So uh, what's really cool is there is a, a new program that is a great front end to the apt package manager in Debian or Ubuntu. It's called Nala. And Nala's goal is to make the apt commands like installing or upgrading easier to use and nicer on the eyes. And Nala th- does this by not showing redundant messages and formatting the packages better and using color to show specifically what will happen with a package during install, removal, it makes or an upgrade. And you can't read it. <laughs> it makes it pretty. But actually, and that's all wonderful. But one of my favorite features of Nala is that it supports parallel downloads so unlike apt which only supports downloading one file at a time it's it's nice to have you know files uh many files downloaded at one time it just makes it so much faster and it's saying up to like 16 percent faster so that's that's pretty cool and it also nala also has a fetch command that will choose the fastest three mirrors and write them to a file for much faster downloads. And that's awesome too. Ah, Nala is bringing it. <laughs> and one of my favorite things as well is it includes some of the features that I love from Fedora's DNF package manager and Arch's Pac-Man. Like at any time you can call Nala space history to print a summary of every transaction ID that you've ever made. And that is just sweet. To, to see the history of your installed packages. And you could actually, if you want to set up a, a, a special configuration, you can delete, you know, different IDs from uh, um, apps you've installed or uninstalled. It's just, it's just sweet. It's just one of those little touches. Of course it's one of the like reasons it. why I and like what, DNF. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you look at this and you're like, man, you know what? Now app, this is pretty. App, app looks like it's infested with Skittles and you're like, awesome. I'm down with it. Yeah. <laughs> so a couple of things. I mean, this is a front end for LibDAP package. That's really what it is. Now mm-hmm. to what Joe was saying, that benefit of parallel downloads. Okay. You got my attention. I like that idea. Yeah. I like the idea, but I don't know if I like mm-hmm. the idea enough to switch over to something other than just plain app, but it is there. What did catch my interest is that history. Because mm-hmm. we've all been in this situation. Absolutely. We've all been in this situation where Something like that might come in handy. What's such a, what am I talking about? Let me tell you the something's broke where you have the, all right, what changed? Mm-hmm. What? Uh, okay. Well, well the software, the software, then you're running the app command to see what was previous last thing installed. Having that history version history available could help you roll things back. It really could. I know for those breakage moments of man, this is going to take all day to figure this out. So look at it just for that. All this is going to be in our show notes. If you're wondering now, um, Deb, and Arch packages are available. So yeah, I might play around mm-hmm. with it. I might play around with it. Uh, the yeah, parallel downloads. I've been having fun. Yeah, I've been having fun. I played with the Deb. <laughs> no, it's cool. Probably the reason I'm not like super excited about this is because I run everything in the studio on Debian 11. So I live basically nothing but security update lifestyle. Mm. Like, mm, but, you know, if I was inapt every other day playing around if I was on Arch well not Arch but uh, let's see Ubuntu Pop OS everything in the world's based on Debian these days so all of those if I didn't name your distro I'm sorry good idea I wonder if there's apt is some, somebody got apt on uh, Arch yet I'm sure that's a thing oh yeah yeah that's a thing I, I there's a project I'm forgetting the name of it that they did that they ported it <laughs> it's cool and the other problem 
I noticed is that all the screenshots mm. are running on console from KDE. Yeah. And I, I, I <laughs> yes. had a thing. I did. I sit back and I'm like, you know, what? probably, probably make this program run a little bit better. Just might. <laughs> is if you switched it over to XFCE4 and ran XFCE yes. term, which brings us to our next story <laughs> from makeuseof.com. Uh, it's something that will, everyone will absolutely just immediately agree on KDE versus XFC, comparing two Linux desktop environments. And they walk this down. They do. And someone's about to be wrong on the internet. Brace yeah. yourselves. A <laughs> couple of things I like. Uh, you know, the stability, they hit on that. And, you know, even KDE mm -hmm. fan humans, you know who wins this one. Let's not even get in that argument. Uh, memory and resource utilization. They gave this one to Team Mouse. I understand. Desktop customization. Yes, definitely KDE. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to get that to KDE, but maybe not for the reason you think. I think there's just too much nonsense in KDE, so there's more to play with, which is always there. But, you know, even back in the 1X, 2X, 3X days, KDE was famous for that, and rightfully so. Um, anything mm -hmm. you want to mess around with, you can, and that's good. That's probably why Valve chose KDE for the Steam Deck. Now, performance and speed optimizations, XFCE, probably. I don't know. And the reason I say I don't know, because it's 2022 and even low end hardware is going to chew through KDE. It's going to chew through XFC. That shouldn't be slowing yeah. you down. And, um, you know, if that's a legitimate consideration. Consider looking into just a window manager instead of a full desktop. Now, desktop navigation. I think <laughs> both allow you to. Do whatever you want. You know, if I want to move this here, move this. Because out of the box, I do not like the default configuration with XFCE. That's because it's changed over the years. I It looks like a CDE with me, 100%. I just move everything down, move all my launchers up top. Yeah. Now, with Katie, you can do the same thing. You know, you got that choice mm -hmm. of freedom. You got those options. And like two things that you don't have, Jill, with Windows 11. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So what, you know, XFCE and KDE are both wonderful desktop environments and, um, you know, to each his own really. But if you want a bit more eye candy with lots, lots of customiz customizability, go with KDE Plasma. And if you want a more minimal and lighter weight approach, go with XFCE. I generally prefer XFCE myself, and I'm on it actually right now, but I've always loved the Rodentia desktop as well. And honestly, hmm, XFCE. I actually still, in, in some ways, like the older version of XFCE better when it was in the 3.0 three, three uh, version. <laughs> I think it's fair I, I'm really to old say school, that. Because that one... I, that I, one looked like CDE. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we were talking about yeah. that last night after the Trek Mania stream yeah. of there's a, somebody who's still developing on the KDE 3X version, keeping that updated and maintained. We talked about it on the mm -hmm. show too. But yeah, one thing with XFC when it comes to stable, you know, XFC has a long-term, you know, like two, three-year release cycles, sometimes six to eight-year release cycles. But when I'm doing the show, one thing... I just cannot tolerate for the sake of the live streams and whatever we're doing is something crashing. Like if something crashes and hangs on the XFC desktop, it's an event. You take a picture mm -hmm. of it. You bring your friends in the room. You're like, look, yeah, true. what? Never seen that. <laughs> That's bizarre. They'll probably never see it again, but both projects are equally as well. And of course there's gnome. Gnome's going to know. <laughs> and all the other yeah. ones we didn't name. I'm sure. Uh, the internet will provide us a list of the ones we didn't cover and why they're better than both uh, XFC <laughs> and KDE because we don't know what we're talking about. So our yeah. opinions are invalid. Someone Aww. is wrong on the internet. Well, KDE, you know, has really gotten so they, they've cleaned up a lot of the paper cuts and there's a lot less issues of stability now. It's just getting better and better. And especially now with the Steam de Deck approaching, They've really been working on the optimizations for the Steam Deck and for other devices and yeah, other it's computers. Be completely, uh, yeah. And it, mm -hmm. it's 
strange for me because I was as much a KDE zealot as I am XFCE yeah. up until something yeah. that rhymed with the number four that involved four. KDE. Yeah, I was the same way. Yeah. And I, I bounced and never looked back because four was rough. No one involved in that will say anything. Now. I was like, yeah, that, <laughs> that was a rough one. And um, But hey, it, it got them. To where they are now and xfc you yeah, keep being absolutely. you little mouse never change and i don't plan yeah you know. we love our rodentia oh, <laughs> rodentia rodentia desktop me <laughs> so and you cute. me and you xfc we're gonna ride x11 into the ground baby <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> so um yeah and two benefits like that you know katie works out of the box with Waylon. big thumbs mm-hmm. up big thumbs it up does. especially yeah. for desktop use now I want to give everyone an example of, um, say, we were doing something like recording a show. <laughs> Just try to, <laughs> yes. try to imagine this, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Or we were just having a conversation. We wanted to record it like for posterity. We wanted to go back and listen to it. Now, by default, you're probably going to use OBS because it's there. It's easy enough to get set up. But by default, OBS is going to record my audio, what I'm saying, and what Jill is saying on the same audio track. Mm-hmm. So the problem is, um, my audio might be down here. And that could be a problem. Jill, could you say a few words? Yeah, you're, you're pretty low you right so now. Loud, Jill? Then. I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but. So he's going to, the magic of OBS. <laughs> there's an easy way to fix that. Because by default, you have that one file, you got that one audio file, and you go back, and this is a common question. This is why I updated this video. I went looking around. I found the video you were talking about, Jill. Mm -hmm. Because I touched on this in a podcasting guide. Yeah, yeah. But this is for the gaming, podcasting, everything. I do a series um, when I have time called just OBS Basics, and we can make this real easy to fix in post. Head over to linksgamecast.com. Check this out. Now, I've kind of walked around through it with advanced audio products. What you're going to do is record every audio source on an individual track, which is good. Um, if you need to go back and post, I even crack open a copy of Katie and live in the end. I'm like, okay, say I was that quiet and Jill was that loud. I can bring up <laughs> just my volume to match Jill, or I can bring Jill back down. No, it's not just the talky bits. In the uh, video example, what did I do? Half-Life. You got to do Half-Life. Yes. When you're trying to talk (laughs) over a video and you're talking, you got the background going on, you get the accents, the shoots, and the pew-pews, maybe that overpowers your voice, or maybe your voice is loud in the game audio is real quiet. You can mix and match in the end. I have a picture right here on the web zone of how to do that, and it's in the video, just how easy it is to fix that. I'm going to tell you right now, if you're doing anything with OBS and you're recording it, go ahead and set this up. Maybe, maybe you'll never need it. Maybe you're awesome. You got everything figured out. It's never been a problem. But the one time it is, you'll wish mm-hmm. you had. Because I get that file. I get that call. What can I do about this? I'm like, well, do you want to spend 20 hours? And like, we can throw some automation on that individually. Oh, really, all you can do is make that problem louder or quieter. So... Mm-hmm. With this easy, one easy trick, it is very easy to set up. Uh, you will have a fail safe just built into your recordings. Mm-hmm. I think that is an important thing, Jill. I don't know. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you need to have um, backups. <laughs> and just, you know, having the separate, you know, audio files will just make life mm. so much easier for when you bring it into your editor and you need to adjust the levels and yeah. <laughs> and it doesn't stop at two. I think I currently yeah. have um, five audio tracks that four. I'm recording. Uh, mm-hmm. And that's five stereo pairs. So you can do the maths on that. That's 10 individual mono tracks. But that's how I'm able to edit the show. Because, uh, you know, I have the DAW for the video listeners. That's recording multi track, you know, my audio, Jill's audio, game audio. But what this is doing, this is on a separate PC. Over the network, it's sending each individual audio track over the network into OBS and I have OBS set to record each individual track. So I'd never have to come back to this unless something is catastrophically wrong, 
But when I drag that video file into DaVinci Resolve, I have those individual audio tracks. So like, say there was mm, a so nice. like loud click pop or something like that. And Jill, you were explaining something while that pop happened. Mm -hmm. I can pull that pop out and not break your audio. You know, you won't get like, yeah. yeah. And like, where did all the audio go? Nope. No one would have or know it was there. Plus it makes it real easy to make funny voices. I can make Jordan nice and squeaky <laughs> sometimes. Or Pedro. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Pedro. <laughs> so go check that out. And uh, hey, if you want to support more stuff like that, easy enough to do. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Come hop in our Discord. You get access to a bunch of things that we throw in. Speaking of that, live and uncut series, it's a podcast, our pre show, this show, the after show. It's all going to be available for you this afternoon. A couple of ways to finance what we do. Speaking of the web zone, you can go there without ad block. No ad block, no mm -hmm. tracking. It is there. All of our media that we release is under Creative Commons. And do with it as ye will, because I just want people to get some education, hopefully some entertainment out of what we do. But we do appreciate each and every yeah. one of you who are able to financially Love you all. support us <laughs> and like, like and retweet and all that fun stuff. What do we got? Uh, we got a store, store.linuxteamcast.com. We got some merch. Merch. We, we got stickers. That can you even see? The, no, you can't see the sticker. See, I guarantee you, we got a wonderful sticker that has. There a, it is. It has a slightly less <laughs> naughty word to cover up a more naughty word. Yeah. <laughs> and um, everything's um, of reasonable quality and reasonably priced. We do thank you very much for um, Rohit. Did you see Rohit in a uh, Mardi Gras with a Linux Zimcast shirt on? Oh, I know that was awesome. Yeah. Yes, was <laughs> he had your dope. face on there, your head. <laughs> Fair warning: if you post that in Discord, we're going to put it on the show, which it was on uh, Linux yeah. Zimcast Weekly <laughs> last week. Um, if you're curious about stuff that I'm planning on buying for the studio or stuff that I've already bought, you can find that on the web zone. We get Amazon wish lists, so you can judge me on like I don't want you to buy that. That's a dumb idea. Maybe you have a better <laughs> idea. Uh, network adapters. I mean, this is just boring studio stuff. If you want to help out with that, that's how I'll publicly shame you and thank you by putting your name on the wall. However, Jill has blinky stuff mm -hmm. and mugs. Yeah. So if you would like a mugs, new mug I to show to up. <laughs> Yay. On, um, I need to put some more on my things on my wish list because people have <laughs> been buying me my my stuffed penguin. So <laughs> let's see. The trick is. The list has gotten smaller. <laughs> crazy wicked expensive stuff it's like the stuff that you dread buying <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and stuff i'm gonna buy anyway but yeah that, that that slows it down real quick but thanks for anybody everyone who hops out with this loud live <laughs> independent we're commercial free you never have to worry about that no mattress ads and uh yeah <laughs> so um speaking of things we were talking yeah. about in the pre-show pizza Jill did yeah, not, you didn't take is issue with this. This is our slice of pie segment. Pizza's pie, so we're going to yeah. roll with it. Uh, this is cucumber, what seems to be red onion and Thousand Island dressing and lettuce yeah. pizza. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Well, I like salad pizzas, actually. Uh, uh, classic Mediterranean pizza here in California. <laughs> we'll have sometimes we'll have uh, balsamic on there and, and veggies and salad and arugula. <laughs> So I actually like those kind of pizzas. <laughs> You're a defective human being, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I say that with all love. This, we, yeah. You were with me when I found this. Where did we find this, Jill? We found this on Our Pizza Crimes. Our <laughs> Pizza, yeah. <laughs> Crimes. Don't forget to leave that Crimes. part out. Yes. No, man. Um, uh, well, then again, we, we had a debate about pineapple chocolate pizza. Because I know some yeah. people would try that. I would. You know, oh, I yeah, think. absolutely. I always. I a, like I like pineapple with chocolate, but I don't know if I necessarily want it on pizza with marinara sauce. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> frightening, frightening <laughs> people. Okay, to the point. Sarcastic pie. I am talking about this a little bit earlier. Um, be this more so sarcastic cool. with a raspberry pie. I don't know. I, I, I try to dial my sarcasm back because my <laughs> deadpan delivery confuses people sometimes from like i'm joking jeez like chill out <laughs> so yeah this is a sarcasm button 100 percent uh hyper x alloy fps pro with cherry reds so, oh you can make it click and do couple together what does this do this makes this is like a switch that will just turn your typing into the spongebob typing 
type that into Google, you'll go, oh, that thing, like, oh, no, you know, the uh, uh, lower uppercase in a yes. nice, handy <laughs> little box. What is this using? Just to, uh, raspberry, uh, I'm looking. That's, is that the Pico? Yeah, there's five? two different, yeah, and there's two different one, ones for the actual uh, keyboard and the other is for, for the sarcasm. <laughs> I'm just 100% done with this. I, I like having the switch that will just automatically do that. Uh, all of this is, let's see if we can just watch it. There we go. Thanks, Ben. Easy to type. I, I like so it. So cool. I like it. It's yeah. simple. It's dumb. It's got a sort of sarcasm switch, even if you don't have that. Uh, that You know what? <laughs> what a great use of a pie. <laughs> you, you know what? It would be handy just to have that box powered with a light blue switch and sarcasm. So sometimes I can just. I need that in a pocket version so I can pull it out and flip the switch onto some people who are just oblivious. Oh, I know. And one that controls your RGB on your keyboard <laughs> so that you can drive someone up, uh, up the wall or create a pattern on their keyboard with the lights. <laughs> That's how people end up missing, Jill. Don't tell people to do that. Yeah. <laughs> but I, li I like this project because it definitely makes typing a combination of uppercase and lowercase letters easier <laughs> up and down and up and down <laughs> it's definitely something ven would like <laughs> and it, it can be a time saver <laughs> yeah. fortunately fortunately in, in my advanced years this is how i've learned um a nice mental exercise to not argue with people on the internet anytime you're looking for the spongebob text generator to reply to somebody just don't reply <laughs> yeah. I say that from personal experience. That is like, okay, I need to go hermer like then no, no, just just let it be. Let it go. <laughs> and you do. So speaking of things we gotta let go, Joe, we gotta say goodbye. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta say goodbye. Oh. Icarus Factor, it's nice to have you in chat again. And so you know, Window Maker is my number one. <laughs> uh X window manager. It, I, I use it all the time. In fact, I usually use it when I'm doing the show. <laughs> so yay! Thank you so much to our patrons and those that are on our Discord chat and in, on Twitch. Oh, we got XF Boy Forever in here. We've got, of course, our advisor Arthur in here, who we love. <laughs> and we got Mir in here. We got Strider in here. All the wonderful people just keeping the show alive and they might be uh, without they might you, not wouldn't be. Happen. they could be bots. Yeah, they could be bots. <laughs> I mean, boy, we'd have a lot of bots if those are all bots. <laughs> all right, beautiful people. Aww. That's going to do it <laughs> for this episode 315. 15. LWDW. Woohoo! Linux Weekly Daily Wednesday. <laughs> I'll see you next week. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>